Hi there, friends. Roxanne Steed here. I'd like to share with you a little something that I've got coming up and thought you might be interested in this too. So on February 23rd, in a week and a half, I'm going to be starting my next class. It's called Plein Air Prep. And right here, like this morning when I got up, it was 14 degrees here in Connecticut. And I, man, it's just too cold for me. I mean, I can go outside if I'm doing something really active or I'm moving a lot, but to go outside and paint, man, it's just too cold. But um, I have a lot of artist friends, you know, newer, newer artists that are just starting out or even um, brand new beginners, friends that are just beginners. They haven't, they haven't even unwrapped the paint yet. And they are wondering, you know, how do I do this? That looks really fun. I want to go on vacation and bring my paints and, and sit and paint you know, these lovely scenes, or I want to go out in my garden when all my beautiful flowers grow and I want to paint what I'm growing in my garden. Um, they're looking for a really fun activity that's meaningful to them and it looks like fun and, and actually it is a blast. So anyway, I wanted to let you in on the fun too. So let me tell you about what we've got going on. Um, in fact, I'll just scroll down. I'm going to share some of my uh, sketchbooks with you that I've done over the last couple of years. And um, the kind of things that you could be making and enjoying. So let's, let me turn my webcam on, make sure that's working. Here we go. So um, yeah, let's bring this down. And I'm going to share just some of my sketchbooks over the years and talk about some of the things that you'll actually be getting to do. So some of the things, uh, this was from a class, gosh, early spring when this was in 2019 before the pandemic, when we could actually go out on location together and hang out in a small group. And um, anyway, it's, it was in April here in Connecticut. It's still, you know, the, the leaves are bare. They haven't come in yet. But the first thing that does come in are daffodils. So I was teaching how to make a nice page layout and include some of the things that um, I saw that day on the park. So in this big space, there's, you know, the daffodils that are all over the ground. And, and I wanted a little vignette of the daffodils. And then there's this grouping of big old trees there that, um, there, it's like a cluster of huge trees that some of them have just tons of carvings and the roots just kind of billow up on each other. They're just so massive. So um, in here, you know, I, I drew some little close-ups of some of the things that are on the tree. Um, some of the things you might want to do plein air is actually just paint. Maybe in a, it's not really outdoors, you're in a cafe. This was in Panera. Um, other things, maybe a neighbor's garden is, you know, popping out blooms. You know, how how might you do a grouping of lovely, um, lovely little vignettes to uh, to include on a page? So this was all from my neighbor's garden. And sometimes maybe it's, you know, the weather's too nasty to go outside. So this was um, just from my library, the, lo the local library. Um, they've got these big cushy chairs and some rocking chairs. And, and I just wanted to make a quick sketch while I was there that day. They've got all this oak paneling and I wanted to capture some of the carved pieces, <coughs> excuse me, that are in the, it's in the paneling around that library. So we're going to talk about big shapes and how to simplify down big shapes, maybe how to capture some flowers that are in your garden. Maybe you want to be able to go to a museum and um, practice with the sculpture there. Some of my favorite things to do plein air are out at local gardens. This is a little, um, it's a Catholic retreat center near us and they've always got the most beautiful things growing in their garden. So, you know, I wanted to include some of the statuary and just the flowers that grow there in summer. Let's see some of the other things. Again, here's another one. If you're, um, maybe you get caught in a rainstorm. Um, the day that I did this sketch, let's see, it looks like my camera's frozen up. The day that I did this sketch, we were going to be outdoors at a park and then the clouds opened up and it just started pouring. I called my church secretary and I said, hey, can I bring my class over and um, can we just sit and draw the stained glass windows? 
And she said, yep, yeah, I'll open up the church. So we did, we went there and they have, um, at St. James in New London, Connecticut, we have all these um, Tiffany stained glass windows. So it was such a treat to be able to draw, draw from these. Um, that was a lot of fun. So again, you know, different ways of using ink and watercolor, or maybe you want to do just watercolor on its own. I love including ink in some of my sketches. This was at another local park in the summer. Again, I wanted to catch some of the statuary, some of the big long views. It's right on the water here on Long Island Sound. It's just got some wonderful things. Um, some coastal scenes. So let's see, what else might there be? So one of the things that I like doing is just seeing big, vast landscapes and how can you break this down into um, different big shapes. And I love bringing ink in, you know, some, I, sometimes I like bringing ink in, sometimes I like just letting the watercolor stand on its own, but sometimes that, just that little bit of definition with ink makes the scene just pop. And um, sometimes you might just have, you know, a little visitor, this little chipmunk came and was sitting on our front porch and I was inside um, sitting in my living room chair and I saw him out there just kind of doing his little chipmunk thing. So I was able to capture this little, these quick sketches of him just sitting and turning it was so much fun. Sometimes if the weather is really chilly, let's see, this was in February of 2018. It was in the low 30s and there was still snow on the ground. It was really chilly, but I was able to sit outside and do this. I, that was about as long as I've ever lasted in that kind of cold weather. But I was in the shelter. I was, um, I had my car backed up and the, um, it's a little Mini Cooper and there's a hatch hatchback on the back. So I was kind of under the, under the hatchback and I wasn't really in the car. I was, I was sitting outside in my little camp stool, but um, at least that blocked the wind off of one side. So um, some other things, you know, when, when things start blooming for us here in Connecticut, it's, you know, things don't really start kicking until May. It just seems so late in the year, but it's nice to be able to set up um, some little still life things on a patio table outside for some travel scenes, garden scenes, or maybe just some local woodland scenes. Uh, I love stone walls and usually there's some fencing near the ends of stone walls, a birdhouse that's half falling over, a neighbor's garden. I liked doing little vignettes from um, her garden. It's quite fun. And then back to uh, a local park that has a really beautiful fountain and they have volunteers who work in the gardens there. So I wanted to capture that scene that's along the water and the, the big view that that garden surrounds. So there's a lot of things that um, make just sketching outdoors so much fun. So in my class that's coming up, I have ways to help you practice and break down all these big things like um, cloud studies. How do we do, you know, how do you make clouds? Um, so one of the lessons is just going through clouds and different ways to represent that. And, um, and then, so after the lesson, we meet once a week and you're able to practice on your own. And I know since, you know, it's, I do this class in like late, mid to late winter. So um, that way people can start practicing indoors some of the things that they're gonna want to learn for outdoors later in the year. We'll talk about shadows, how to place shadows in your garden scenes that really help give, give maybe a flower bed a lot of depth. Um, again, focusing on big shapes, putting a person in there. One of the things that I've been doing lately that I think um, this kind of stretched me a little bit. I wanted to share this with you. Um, so I have, I would take this little sketchbook. It's a Stillman and Burn. It's about, oh gosh, maybe was this eight inches. Let's see if my tape measure is handy. 
I've moved my desk around so oh here it is so let's see this thing is eight and a half by five and a half and this fits in one of my coat pockets i have this um big winter coat that's got some big deep pockets on the front i stick this in one pocket and two pens in the other pocket. I, they're Pigma Microns. One is a 005 and the other is a 02. You could take whatever your favorite combination is, but I wanted one with a medium tip and the other one with a really fine tip. And so I actually sketched this on location. This was back in December. It was 36 degrees. So I made note of what time of day, it was 10 a.m. in the morning, uh, you know, a couple of days before Christmas, and I'm standing out on the snow. And all I took with me that day was this book and these two pens. And I just sketched in the big shapes of what I was seeing that day. Then I brought it home and laid the paint in. I just you know, made a visual memory. And what that does is really forces you to simplify and see all the big shapes. Now, another day in January, I wanted to do this again and see, you know, okay, let's see how far I can go. And um, so I went to this nearby, this park that's close to us. And I wanted to, um, I wanted to get a couple of little vignettes. I wanted some landscape scenes and I wanted to, I wanted to go get some bird scenes, some local bird life. And then I wanted, you know, another long view. And then I wanted to pick up some, um, other little things and so and i left some sp a space for some notes so that i could remind myself what i saw that day what i did let's see this day it was a little warmer it was 45 degrees so that was actually not bad it was 45 it was sunshiny i had that same big old coat on so i stuck this book in my left pocket this in my right pocket and um and i was able to do three different um little vignettes and what i did to trace the box i just laid my cell phone down traced around the box made myself a you know a nice little box with some curved edges drew around that drew around that um, and then you know made a cute little rope line around it um also in this place i um there's this ginkgo tree that I really love and I know right where it is next to the parking lot. And so I wanted to see what the dried up leaves look like at this time of year in January. So I, I gathered up a couple to bring home and then um, draw them in my sketchbook here. So I only did the ink lines on location and I remembered, I actually wrote some notes, um, dark and white. And I've been noticing these, um, these big birds and I was wondering what the heck are they and as it turns out they are brants and I was able to um, look them up when I got home and I was nice and warm then so you know I it was chilly I mean 45 degrees is still chilly but I was able to do the ink lines for three little vignettes so I did one and then I walked a little further warmed up my hands got warm again did another scene um, and then a third scene. And then I made some notes. I had on um, this cute little Irish cap that I have. And so I wanted to sketch my cap, but I, you know, my it doesn't cover my ears. So I made a little note that next time I go out, I'm gonna wear my my little wool cap that I can stretch over my ears. So it's fun having a place where you can make little notes like that. So here's what a page would look like when I would, um, actually go out on location. So this one I did on, um, I didn't write the day's date, but it was January, it was in the January this year, and it was very gray, overcast, and very cold. But I got the big shapes. Um, there's still snow on the ground, and I need to get this, these, this color down before I forget it. But um, I just made the, the lines that were along this path you know, there's some cedar trees and then there's some bear trees with lots of twigs. There's a stone wall and then little stubs of grass in this field and a path that leads up into this upper pasture. So um, another one that I did, um, I got in a kind of a, a grouping. So this was in February. It was sunny and bright with no wind. 
and 36 degrees snow still on the ground there's this little inlet um not too far from us and out in, in the water of the end of the river there's this um boxy looking uh lighthouse it's called ledge light and the ferry came in so you know there's all this activity that was going on that day and so again i need to get the color in before i forget what i was looking at that day and then the same day that i went out and made this sketch i walked a little further at waterford beach and just walked down on the beach at that the uh, southern end of the beach there's this um these big boulders and all these cedar trees it's just a really it's a really nice view and i'd always been wanting to sketch that and so i did in winter and of course it was 36 degrees but with no wind and bright sun it was it was okay it was actually decent so you know i could get this done in 15 20 minutes you know not long because my hands get cold and um i think i'm probably yeah i had on little half mitts so my fingers would stick out and that way i could keep most of my hand warm um, and then just work quickly, get the big shapes in, and then I'll be laying some paint on that soon. So, you know, we'll talk about, you know, how to do those drawings for big landscapes. And, you know, once you learn how to simplify what you're seeing, that's what makes this all possible. To simplify those big shapes. So one of the exercises that we do, and it always feels really goofy, it's a blind contour. So in a blind contour, I mean, you can try it right now. Um, you set up an object that has a really distinctive shape. This was a, uh, it was a watering can that had been made into a flower pot and it had a big, um, a pot of geranium in it. And geraniums have some interesting shapes. Um, so what you're doing is that you're going to sit this down and you're going to you put your pencil on your paper and then you put your eyeballs you're 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 looking at that object that's across the room from you or wherever you you know where you, wherever you set it and you've set it in a way that you can see its silhouette and then as your eyes move along the actual object you're just going to make your pencil kind of imitate that shape that you're looking and you don't look at your paper you keep your eyes on that actual object the flower pot that's you know across the the table from you or across the room whatever and you stare at that object and of course they're going to come out wonky and weird and but you know you do it over and over what happens is you see that you you are getting each time you do it you get a little closer it doesn't end up um quite as weird as you think, but it kind of trains you to see just the big shape and not the teeny little details of, oh, look at this pretty petal here. Look at this lovely stem sticking up so nice and tall. It makes you see the big shape. And, and that's part of, I think one of the hardest things for new artists or any artist uh, is to get used to seeing big shapes and not getting hung up on tiny, tiny details. So anyway, that's one of the things we'll be, um, covering it's really a good drawing aid we'll be talking about shadows and so shadows make the light come alive how do you make um something that is um you know like a, a dark red colonial salt box house how do you make that come alive with light so this was done out on location and um but we're going to be working inside you know because the weather is weird and we're online but i'm going to be getting you ready for things that you know this is what you can do later on as this year progresses and the weather warms up the weather gets nice maybe you live in a southern climate and things are already nice you can be learning this and practicing this in the comfort of your of your kitchen or your dining room wherever you want to set up your art and um i mean i've worked in all kinds of places over the years i've had my art studio was in a closet it was in the basement it was in a kid's bedroom after they left for college it's been in the corner of the kitchen it's been in the dining room so uh, you know we were in a navy family so we were moving every three years and each place that we lived i would commandeer a little spot for my for my art stuff even if it was you know the kitchen table it, uh, we would eat you know eat at the dining room and not the kitchen so i um i would always claim a space in the house somewhere but anyway 
this way, this in plein air prep, you're going to be able to practice all these things inside, get used to them, get that eye hand coordination warmed up and ready for when you're ready to go outside. And we're also going to be talking about how do you get your supplies there? What do you take? How much do you really need? Um, I've started a little Facebook group called Traveling Light with Watercolor because I, I really think that's important. Let me get back up so I can talk with you guys. We're done with the tabletop. So I think that's really important on um, keeping your gear light and easy. Um, I think, you know, another one of the things is we think we have to bring everything and bring the kitchen sink. One of my friends told me she would take me um, kayaking all the time. And she said, you know, the smaller the boat, the more often you go boating. And I thought, you know, that same thing applies to paint. The smaller your gear, the easier it is to just grab it and go, get out the door, go where you're gonna, you know, have fun and enjoy the scenery. Cause I wanna get a walk in. Um, I don't wanna just park my car and set up a bunch of gear. Although, and I have done that before. I mean, sometimes that, you know, things, that just works. That's just works out that way. But um, I think also if you, you know, maybe, maybe that beautiful spot that you want to paint is at the end of a two mile hike and you don't want to be carrying all this crap in and be exhausted by the time you get to your, th that lovely spot. So if you, the, the lighter and easier that you make it for yourself, um, the more wonderful little paintings that you're going to have um like these small books that i shared with you um you know they're not that big but they they have some wonderful little memories that i i know i'm going to go back time again and um enjoy looking at and reminding myself oh yeah i did go out on 36 degree weather but it was sunny and there was no wind and you know it was january but maybe you know maybe i can do this again <clears throat> Excuse me. So let me cover just some of the things that we're going to um, talk about. Um, and yes, it is for beginners. So if you're just starting out, maybe you have just broken out the paints and you're kind of getting used to things. Um, if you're feeling like you're still like, I don't know what I'm doing, um, go to my website, roxannesteed.com. And, and I'll put that in a link somewhere where you can find that. And there's a little free tutorial. It's what I call the secret to watercolor. And it's all about this ratio of paint, your, your pigment to water. How much water and how much paint do I need? Once you get the hang of that, things start getting a little easier. And we're gonna be covering drawing. So if you feel like, I don't know what I'm doing drawing wise, I'm gonna help you, we'll, we'll crack that nut too. So, um, Here's some of the things we'll be talking about. Learning to see big shapes first and the details last. So you don't wanna have the flea on the hair of the dog before you have the dog. You gotta have the, the dog, the big picture. So we're gonna be looking at those big shapes. We're gonna also be talking about abstract shapes in the landscape from reality to expressiveness. So in a good painting, and this is kind of outside, maybe outside the scope of sketchbook work, but in a good painting, there is an underlying abstract shape. And this is even in, if you're a real tight realist, but there's a strong abstract shape that kind of uh, be between your lights and darks. So um, we'll be talking about that in, in more detail and it's gonna really help your paintings stand out and, and really be vibrant and, and lovely. Um, we'll also be talking about editing information what to put in and what to leave out because sometimes there's some details that are just you don't need them you don't need them to tell that story of where you were that day because it's you know just not important uh, i'm going to be talking about contour drawing blind contour drawing and how to refine it so just like that little uh flower pot that i was showing you with the geraniums um so We'll start with the blind contour drawing and then we're going to refine it and, and that will help you. Um, that's just one tool, one tool of many to help you improve your drawing skills. We'll also be talking about using ink pens. These are Pigma Microns. I like those a lot. I also use 
fountain pens that I really like. I never thought I would, but once I got um, got the hang of it, oh, I love these things. So anyway, we'll talk about using ink pens for shading and texture and, and how to get the most out of these pens. Um, we'll be talking about clouds uh, in all kinds of seasons and making them, making clouds part of your composition, not just a, a poofy little afterthought. Um, you know, clouds, when we are outside and we're, we're actually on location and we're looking at them, they're moving. Those, I mean, they don't sit and pose for you. They're moving all the time. So what helps is if you're, see the ones that you like, use them in your composition and that's another thing that's going to help make that painting really lovely let's see um we'll review all about greens now we talked about this in the class that i just finished my all about color class but you know in spring once these i mean right now things are brown and gray mauves it's, you know it's winter in connecticut winter in new england so there's a lot of um soft, subtle colors. And once spring comes, things start livening up. They get lighter, fresher. So we're gonna, we'll talk a little bit about that, but it's particularly green so that by the time you get to summer, you're gonna be pretty comfortable with, you know, painting what you're seeing out there. We'll also touch on architecture, how to make a building stand up and look, not look like it's wonky or the house that Jack built, and also how to make shadows on those buildings so that, um, you know, that helps give them form so they'll, you know, stand up and helps them look illuminated. If that sun's shining on it, oh, it's just a beautiful thing. So I want you to be able to do that as well. Um, and then we'll, uh, with the that in mind, we're also going to talk about the weather's influence on color. So, you know, maybe it's a rainy day. Um, and those can be really beautiful too. Maybe it's that real, that, um, that fine mist, it's not quite rainy, but you know, if you've got hair like mine, it, it won't stay, you know, smooth like this. It's gonna go curly and frizzy in that misty rain, but those misty days are beautiful to paint in and they, um, it affects, you know, the drying time of your paper so it, it affects not only the the visual picture of what you're putting in, but it affects your your painting as well. So we'll be talking about all of those, you know, how the weather will affect your your paints behavior. Uh, we'll cover how to paint water and make it sparkle. We touched a little bit on that in my last um, the last series all about color. But we'll review that again because chances are you're going to be covering you're going to you know, if you live near water, as we do, um, maybe you're inland, but there's a lake or a river. There's going to be some body of water nearby that um, that really attracts you that you want to have in, in your painting. And um, and then certainly we're going to talk about how to pack whatever you want in there to be enough so that you have what you need to make something lovely in your sketchbook. And um, and that's kind of all about my theme, my overall theme of traveling light with watercolor so i hope you um i hope that intrigues you I, if you've you know whether you're brand new or you've been painting indoors but you're you really want to venture outdoors or maybe you're kind of feeling a little bit chicken like i don't know i'm out in public people are going to be looking at me i don't want people looking over my shoulder so we'll talk about how to deal with that kind of stuff too um so anyway my bottom line is I love to have fun and I love for my students to have fun. I love for them to gain that confidence so that they can go out and have fun. And um, so that's what we're aiming for with plein air prep. So I hope you'll join me and my, my other students and um, come have fun with us. So we'll get you on your way so that you're ready to be, you're, you're gonna join the plein air movement, you will, be ready to go paint outdoors when the weather is great. And even you're going to learn how to do it when it's maybe not so great. So anyway, I hope to see you in class. Um, let me know if you have any questions and we'll see you soon. My That plein air prep starts February 23rd. So hope to see you. I've got my registration open on my website. So um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll help you figure out if it's right for you or not. And hope to see you in class. Again, bye-bye.